Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time is uh, for you now, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is uh, one of the Power BI webinar series the, uh, delivered by community, uh, and this webinar is about uh, data flow and shared data set. Uh, as a multi-developer architecture for Power BI. I am Reza Rad uh, and uh, I am uh, a consultant in Radicad. Uh, I do Power BI training uh, a lot all around the world. I've written some books on Power BI. Um, some of these are free. You can download it in, um, in our blog in radicad.com. We have uh, weekly videos and uh, and also uh, articles on all aspects of Power BI and AI. Uh, I'm also Marcus, original director and MVP. Um, uh, these are my contact information down at below. Feel free to reach out to me uh, later on if you have any questions. Uh, and feel free to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel or uh, check out our articles. OK, uh, now let's uh, move on to the topic, which is data flow and shared data set as a multi-developer architecture. Now, before I start talking about what multi-developer architecture is, let's talk about a single developer scenario. Uh, in Power BI, when you have one single, uh, in Power BI environment, when you have one single developer, everything is very easy. Let's say you have one developer in a team or in the whole company, that developer is building a Power BI solution that might have multiple end users, but only that person is the uh, single developer of that uh, of that reporting um, requirement. In that scenario, usually we want the solution to be something very agile. That person wants to load data, I mean, get data from different places, do data transformation, um, do the relationship between tables, data modeling, add some calculation and analytics on it, visualize it, and then publish it and share it with others, right? This should be all a very fast and agile process. For those scenarios, usually we work with like one file, everything in one file, and that is how Power BI build in general. When you build a Power BI solution, you build everything within one file and you publish it and it works perfectly fine. Right, easy to maintain and easy to uh, easy to control and mm, fast uh, solution. However, this method doesn't work when we have multiple developers. Let's say we have a team of analysts, a team of data analysts. This team is uh, a group of people, and this group of people is um, uh, they are building Power BI solution together. Like one person might build something, another person adds something to that. Right. Uh, in those scenarios, uh, the single file comes up with some challenges. Like, for example, if I have one single file, every Power BI um, solution is one PBIX file. If I have everything in one file, then if my colleague as the next developer in my team, as a, another developer in my team, if he or she wants to also build a solution, I, uh, I should send him the PBIX file and he should open it, make changes. He should send me the file after the change. We cannot work at the same time because then like we would have like different copies of the file. Somehow we need to merge it, right? Which comes up with totally different challenges. Uh, this means that we all building everything with one single file. That file gradually will grow. We will have more tables into that. We will have more relationships, more calculations, more pages in the visualization. Sometimes it ends up with hundreds of uh, visualization pages, hundreds of tables, lots of relationships. The refresh time would take really long time for some scenarios, so it, it comes with a lot of challenges uh, when you have multiple developers and you want to build uh, one Power BI, uh, build Power BI solution in one single file. It would be really high maintenance, lots of duplicate. This is just a few of those challenges you might face in that scenario. Now let's talk about these uh, one by one. Let's talk about uh, two of these biggest challenges and how you can solve it using data flow and shared data set because that is the topic of this uh, this uh, talk. Uh, one example is when you want to use a query in multiple files and when I say a query I mean a power query query which is basically a table 
when you want to use a table in multiple files, uh, how you would do that. Uh, when you are building a table in multiple files, uh, like right now, the approach that you take probably is something like copying. Let's assume we have this scenario. Let's say we have two different Power BI files. Uh, each of these is one Power BI file. One is sales PBIX file. Another is inventory PBIX file. And uh, there are usually tables that you need in both. Like date table is one of the tables that you need probably in all types of um, solutions. Uh, but in this scenario specifically, in inventory, I need product. In sales, I also need product. Now in inventory, I might have warehouse, which I don't need it in the sales or in the sales, I might have uh, store, which I don't need it in the inventory, but product and date, these are tables that I need in both, right? And if I'm building these tables through Power Query process, then it means that I should go and uh, somehow build it again in my second file. Let's say in my first file, if I build uh, that um, date table or product table um, as a merge with some other tables, get data from different places, when I build that, then I have to copy it somehow here which would come with some problems, of course. Uh, the solution for that is uh, using data flow uh, because when you uh, copy data from, uh, when you copy things from one file to another file, let's say you open uh, the Power Query script, you copy things into this one, then, then the problem is that uh, these are two separate piece of codes and copying from one to another will cause uh, the problem of having to separate codes later on after two weeks if you go and change it in one of the files you have to make sure that you go and change it in the second file and what if after some time you come up with a third file also that needs that table right your source code is uh, everywhere which is not good. You should have a single version of your source code and uh, that source code should uh, run and produce the product table or date table. These Power BI files should use it. And that is what uh, Dataflow uh, will make possible for you. So what is Dataflow? Because you might uh, haven't used it before. This might be your first experience with Dataflow. What is Dataflow? We have data flow in different technologies of Microsoft. We are talking about Power BI data flow in this um, in this talk. Uh, Power BI data flow is a Power Query process that runs independent from Power BI dataset, and it uh, runs in cloud. Of course, it stores the data in cloud, but it runs independent from Power BI dataset. The most important part of this definition is is the fact that it runs independent. Uh, why? Because when I build a Power BI uh, solution, when I build a PBIX file, that PBIX file already include uh, Power Query in it, right? That has Power Query in it. When I publish it to the website, when I publish it to the service, and when I schedule it to refresh, that means I'm running Power Query in the cloud uh, already, right? So running Power Query in the cloud is not data flow. A lot of people think that running Power Query in cloud means data flow. Running Power Query in cloud independent from Power BI means data flow because uh, the result of this is not dependent on any Power BI reports. I can run my Power Query transformation. This diagram somehow shows that I can run my Power Query transformation, store the data not in Power BI reports or data set, in somewhere else. Now you might think, okay, where that data is stored? If it is not stored in Power BI, uh, the answer is that right now it is stored in Azure Data Lake storage. As CSV files in on inside folders, it is stored in that structure. Uh, there are some discussions later on. This might be available in some other formats as well. But right now, as of now, we are talking about Azure Data Lake storage as a CSV files. Uh, so it is not stored in Power BI. It uh, it has nothing to do with your Power BI report. It is just totally separate. Now you might say uh, if it is in Azure Data Lake, then it means I need to have Azure Data Lake subscription, but I don't have anything else. I just have my Power BI licenses. The good news is that for using Power BI data flows, you don't need to have a separate Azure subscription. You can just use your Power BI license and it is all embedded in it. 
if you have your own Azure Data Lake subscription, you can use it. That is called like external data flows, which you connect your Power BI data flow to your own Azure Data Lake subscription and use that. But normal way of using it, which is uh, the Power BI uh, data flows, or let's say internal data flows, is already using the part of space that you have as part of your Power BI licensed account uh, in Azure Data Lake. You don't need anything else for that. You don't need any other licenses for that, right? It's all part of your Power BI license. Uh, and by the way, uh, data flow is a, a cloud only concept. If you are using Power BI report server, if you are using all the Power BI uh, features on-prem, you won't be able to use data flow, but there are substitutes for that. Um, now, what uh, Power BI can do with data flow, because everything so far is like totally outside of Power BI. It runs in the cloud. I mean, it runs in Power BI website, but it's not part of the report. It runs in, uh, in the cloud, in the Power BI service. It stores it in Azure Data Lake uh, as a CSV file. Here is the connection with Power BI. Then Power BI can get data from the result of that data flow from that CSV file. So that CSV file acts like an intermediate storage for uh, your Power BI solution. You are building kind of an intermediate database or an intermediate data warehouse between the data flow and the Power BI. So if we uh, go back to the previous challenge and we say how we can solve it with data flow, this is how you can solve it with data flow. You can have a data flow and that data flow runs the date dimension or product dimension as well, or any other uh, things that you want to be shared across these files. Uh, your code is here for running that date table or product table. And the other files that want to use the result of this, they just get data directly from here. They don't uh, need to have a copy of that uh, transformation. You build a layer here for your data transformation, a layer here for the rest of your Power BI implementation. And that layered approach makes your Power BI solution kind of a multi-developer at this stage, right? Uh, you would, of course, have a re faster refresh time as well, because right now when everything is in one file, uh, data transformation happens in this file, all the calculation, everything happened in the file. But when you separate it, when you put data transformation in data flow and the rest in Power BI, of course, your overall refresh time is the same, but your data load time is faster because you are doing transformation at one stage and then you load the result after transformation, right? It helps you to have a faster development time. Okay, now let's see what the data flow is and how you can use it as a demo or as an example. Um, here I have a couple of Power BI files which I'm going to um, show to you in a second. So this is this is two Power BI file I have and um, they don't have a date table. The reason that I built these two separately because I want to show you that in a real world scenario, we might have files uh, that don't have the table that we want and we want to add it to that. Uh, so I'm waiting for my Power BI solution to open. This is one of them. So this is one Power BI file. When I go to the relationship, it's a really simple file. It has customer table, sales table, product table. Uh, and I have another Power BI file. Totally different Power BI file. This one has sales, inventory, manufacturing and product. This is more high level than the other one because that one is only focusing on sales. This is focusing on sales, inventory, manufacturing. Both of these two need to have date table in it. I'll just bring this a little bit aside. They both need to have date table in it. Now in Power BI, you can use the default date table. Mm, that is good for some of the default scenarios, but let's say I have a specific date table with fiscal columns, with public holidays, with something like that. And I want to use that here. Now I have another file, another Power BI file that previously I created the date table in that. Um, I'm just opening that as well. And that date table I've created is using uh, Power Query. There are other ways to create a date table as well, uh, but this one that I'm looking at is using Power Query. So this file 
I have a date table. This is how my date table look like. Not a really complicated one, very simple. Uh, and you can download the script of this from my uh, blog. I've uh, copied the entire script usually from there uh, whenever I use it. Um, this has one record per day uh, and columns per year, month, quarter, uh, all those kind of things, right? And because this is built in Power Query, I'll go to transform data. I'll see the query here in the advanced editor. This is where my query is. I can copy this and go and paste it in other files, right? In here, I can start with a blank query and paste it here, but that is not the data flow solution because as soon as I do this, then next time if I go and change it in the original file, I have to come and change it here as well. So what data flow can do for me is this. I can build that data flow. To build the data flow, I'll go to Power BI website and uh, Data flow, as I mentioned, is a Power BI website only feature, right? So I'll go to the Power BI website. Um, for creating a data flow, you need to be in an organizational workspace, not my workspace. My workspace is basically like my, doc my document or my desktop. You don't really use it for this kind of purpose. So I go to my works uh, to to one of uh, one of my workspaces, right? Um, in this example, I just go to to this workspace, right? Uh, and you see there's a section for data flows here. Now I already have a date data flow here, but I'm going to start from scratch and show you how this works so you can see uh, the process, right? So here I'll go and create a data flow. This is how you create a data flow, not from desktop, from the website itself. I create a data flow. There are different ways that you can create it. And this is not a session all about data flow, so I'm not going to talk about every single option, what their differences is. Uh, let's say um, for this example, I'm just starting with new entity, which is basically a new table. And then here I'll see uh, something like Power Query Online. If you use Power Query in Power BI Desktop, you are familiar kind of with this uh, layout. So this shows me all the data sources that I can start get data from it. Like, for example, I can say get data from Excel, get data from SQL Server, from Azure SQL database. I can choose any of these and then enter the uh, server information credential. Or alternatively, for this example specifically, because uh, I have the script already, I can just copy that script in my data flow. I can say start from a blank query. And paste that script here, right? That script here, right? Uh, now, if uh, like if your uh, script is getting data from a specific source, from Excel, from SQL Server, and things like that, and if that is an on-prem source, you might need to come here and choose the gateway that you have. This is a script that doesn't really have a source because the table is generated automatically. This, in this case, from 2010 for 20 years. I can even change that and I can say generate it from, let's say, 2018 for three years, just as an example, right? And then next. This will build that for me, and you see this is like Power Query uh, experience online. This is recently enhanced uh, much better, so you, you see a lot of transformations here available now. And this is my table with all the transformations exist here. I can call this date. And in one power, uh, in one data flow, you can have multiple tables. So I can have my product table. I can have any other tables that I want. But let's say for this one, I just keep it simple, this table only. Then I say save and close. And I call this data flow something. Let's say PBI webinar sample data flow. Now you can schedule your data flow to refresh like a normal data set, or you can refresh it manually. For production purposes, usually you schedule it to refresh. Here is my data flow. You schedule it to refresh, but because this is just a test, I just refresh it manually here. Uh, which one was it? This one. Okay, so I just refresh it manually here. 
And uh, while that is refreshing, now I go back to my other Power BI file. So I don't need this file anymore. This was just a file that had only the date table in it. Now that can that logic is okay. I'm trying to get to this one. That logic is now moved to data flow. I don't need this. But on other Power BI files, like this file, for example, if I want to bring that date table, I say get data from Power BI data flows. Right here. Get data from Power BI data flows. This is the important part of this uh, this whole thing, right? Instead of me going and building it from blank query or from any other data sources, I say get data from Power BI data flows. Uh, you need to log in, of course, with your uh, account to see list of all data flows that you have access to, uh, which I have done that previously. And um, then this is under general data set workspace. And under that, this is the data flow I've created. Under that, I have a date table, right? Which I click on it. And I see date table is already built for me, right? I don't need to build it again. It is all built. I just click on load and that's it, right? That is adding this date table in my model, which then I can create a relationship of that to other between that and other tables. And same thing can happen. You see here is my date table. Same thing can happen in my other Power BI file. I can add the date table here as well. So the beauty of this uh, implementation is that now later on, if um, for some reason that date table changed, let's say someone decided to come and uh, and add a field to that or change a logic, remove a couple of steps. All we need to do is to just refresh this in Power Query one more time to get the changes. I don't need to copy that logic. I don't have uh, multiple versions of the source code. I have one single version of my Power Query code and that is in the data flow in Power Query. right? Uh, so uh, this is an approach that usually you use. Uh, let me come back to this slide. Okay, this is the approach that usually you use to build a kind of like a centralized data warehouse. So you build your tables that are kind of shared between uh, or will be shared between Power BI files in data lake storage using the data flow, of course, and each data flow can have one or multiple tables. As you see here, I have some examples of that. You build kind of that data warehouse. Now it might not be exactly uh, SQL Server data warehouse, but it is at uh, stored tables in a CSV format that you can use in Power BI. And because your logic is only here for creating those tables, uh, it's much easier to maintain it. You can have one person taking care of this part and uh, other person doing the modeling, right? Now this is part of the architecture. Another part of the architecture is Duplicating the data set. Another problem with multi developer approach is duplicating the data set. Now, before I explain what that problem is, let's first explain what the data set is, because this concept is not still clear to many people, uh, even, they are, even though they are using Power BI for multiple years. Power BI data set is an object or let's say um, it's a component of Power BI that is sitting behind the scene and you don't see it easily in a Power BI uh, desktop. Uh, example is here. Here I have, let me uh, go back to my demo here. I have this, right? This is a Power BI file. Uh, when I save this file, it all becomes one file, PBIX, right? Uh, but if I go to the task manager of my machine and if I find Power BI desktop here, of course, I have like two versions of that because I have two Power BI desktop open. Uh, you see the, these are two Power BI desktop open, but one of the services under that is this SQL Server Analysis Services. Now, because I have two Power BI desktop open, I have two SQL Server Analysis Services as well. Uh, even if you run Power BI on a machine that uh, Power BI file or desktop on a machine that doesn't have SQL Server Analysis Services in it, this will um, Power BI automatically install this for you because this is where the data stores. This is the in-memory engine 
of Power BI. This is where the tables are. This is where the relationship is. This is where the DAX calculation is. This is where the connection to the data sources. This is what we call data set. Whatever you see in the report layout, like this one doesn't have any visualization in it, but if you have any visualization on it, this would be your report. This separation of a report and data set is much clearer, much more visible in the Power BI website because in the website we have something called report and data set. After publishing your uh, file, you'll see that you have something in the data set, you have something in the report. You probably have seen it previously and you might wonder why it is like two different things, why it is not one thing. That is exactly because of the same reason that we have a data set and a report. For a data set, you can schedule it to refresh, you can refresh it manually, you can see the latest refresh time, you can change the connection to the source. That is the data set. Now, that data set by default is used only to feed data into one report. However, one data set can be used in multiple uh, reports. Uh, and that is good for this scenario. Let's say you want to use one calculation, a DAX calculation you wrote, you want to use it in multiple files. You spend a lot of time, you wrote a year to date calculation, running total calculation, uh, rolling 12 months calculation. Now you want to use that in, um, in, the, um, in multiple files. How you can do that, right? Solution is this data set, but using it as a shared data set. Every data set can be a shared data set. Uh, when you have a data set in the Power BI website, you can easily go and say, uh, I want to create a new report from that. Or in the Power BI um, desktop, you can say get data from Power BI data set. And that way you are building a report on an existing data set, you are using that report using the shared data set. That report won't have a data set itself. Let me show you that as a next demo. Uh, so I'm going to close these two Power BI files because I don't need them anymore. This one closed and this one closed. And I'm going to start with the totally new Power BI file. Now, before I uh, build that new Power BI file. Let me show you something here. Here I have a, okay, this is my Power BI new file, but uh, in, in here, for example, uh, you see that I have a data set already in this, uh, in this workspace called movies, right? Uh, and this movies might have a report, might not. It already has a report. Let me go and see the report as well. This is some movies information, analysis of movies, right? Movies sales, movies rating, and things like that, right? I already have this uh, analysis, and probably there are some calculations, relationships between tables and things like that, right? I want to build a new report on top of this. I can, in my Power BI desktop, I can go and say get data from Power BI data set. This time is data set, it's not data flow from Power BI data set. I say get data from Power BI data set. And then I will see again all the data sets that I have access to, right? Data sets that uh, are kind of either I have created them or someone created it and shared it with me. If I go further down, I'll see uh, some others also shared with me. Apparently I create a lot of data sets myself. Um, so uh, if there's anything, I will see that that way. Uh, and I select it. Let's say I'm in this case looking for that movies. Right, this is the movies in general data set workspace, right? I go and select that. I'll talk about endorsement in a second. So I select that. This will create a live connection to that data set. Here it is. You see, I have a live connection to the Power BI dataset, to the movies in general dataset workspace. And this live connection will bring all the tables with their fields, everything, and if there is any calculations, right? You see all of these calculations are also here. I can easily go and uh, do some visualization here. Right? Here is my visualization, which is the rating of movies in different year pins, right? So I can build visualization without even knowing how this model is built. Uh, after 
building my visualization, which can be multiple pages, multiple visuals, then I can save it and publish it to the website. And when I publish it to the website, this one, let me just publish it so you can see it. I am calling this one. Uh, let me just save it in my desktop. I'm calling this one uh, movies uh, shared data set sample. You can even publish it in another workspace. This is uh, this can be published in any workspaces. Let's say I publish it in um, in, for example. Just somewhere else like in publication workspace as an example. Right now I published it there. Now I'm going to open that workspace uh, and and the report. This is the report, right? Uh, in this report, when I go here uh, in this workspace, I see this report. This is my report. When I go to the data set, there is a data set. But in fact, this data set is not really a data set. This is a link. You see this link? This is different from normal data. Set. Normal data set looks like this. This is a link to the original data set and original data set lives in my other workspace. Here it is, right? Uh, if this data set scheduled, that, uh, that report will get scheduled refresh, that report will get the update information. This way I have one data set serving multiple reports and one data set can be serving as many as reports you like. And using this way, I don't need to duplicate my my relationships. I need to, I don't need to duplicate my DAX calculations. I can have multiple visualizations on the same report. Now, one thing that I said I will talk about that uh, a little bit later is this endorsement. Uh, because when I get data from Power BI dataset. Uh, uh, you remember when I said get data from Power BI dataset, there was a big list of data sets because of uh, like I might have access to hundreds of data sets and there is no way for me to understand like which one is a good data set to use which one is not because I haven't developed them uh, because of that reason uh, we have this ability to endorse uh, to have a endorsement on our data sets this endorsement has like three different options no endorsement at all certified or um, promoted and that means that uh, like um, normal data set is like that, no endorsement. If you have run a few tests, you know it is good. You might endorse it as a promoted data set. If you think you've done all the testing, like a test developer checked and made sure everything is right, then they might certify it. And this configuration can be done in the setting of a data set here in the endorsement. You can say, is this default promoted or certified? Uh, and it tells me here that it is certified by me. Certifying a data set can be controlled by the Power BI um, tenant admin. Power BI tenant admin can say only these people can certify data sets because they know that these are uh, the test processes to go through and they know what, uh, what are these steps uh, should be done and they certify a data set. And certified promoted data set, they usually come first when I say get data from a data set. That is why you have seen those options coming first. I just show it to you one more time. Um, that is why those options coming first when I say uh, give me list of data sets. So here, if I say get data from Power BI data set, despite the fact that I have like hundreds of data sets access, but here you see that certified comes first, then promoted, then the rest. So it's a labeling system basically um, to, to give user the ability to distinguish that this is a better data set to use than that. Something like this. Now, going back to my slides, let's talk about the architecture that I've been uh, saying for the multi-developer approach. This is the architecture I'm talking about. Uh, we used data flow. We used shared data set here. I called it shared data model, but behind the scene it's like, I mean, uh, but it is the same thing. It's just a different name. And we have the visualization layer. We have three layers of a Power BI architecture here. The data flow layer is the layer that we do all the data transformation. We get data from different sources. We do transformation and load it in Azure Data Lake using data flow. Then in Power BI 
data set. You get data from there. You might build multiple data sets, like one for sales, one for, I don't know, inventory, one for HR. And then on each data set, you can have multiple Power BI files. Having these as the three separate layers of architecture enables you that uh, enables you to have multiple developers at a time. You can have someone good at Power Query transformation. That person can come and write data flow transformations. Someone good at DAX and calculations and relationships can come and take care of this part. Someone good at visualization or even multiple people good at visualization, then can come and build visualization and they can all work at the same time in this environment as a multi developer environment for Power BI. Uh, for the first layer, if I'm building a data flow, I get data from anywhere I want and I build my data flow. For the second layer, I'm building my shared data set. I get data from data flow. And for the third layer, when I'm building my visualization, I get data from Power BI data set, right? And that way I have the separation of these three layers easily. Uh, now, this is not just for only Power BI part. So you might have some users who are good at Excel. And for those Excel users, you can uh, use the same thing because we have something called the analyzing Excel. And analyzing Excel can happen on a shared data set. This means that when I have this um, data flow and a shared data set, I can have users, Excel users, connecting to these shared data sets using Analyze in Excel. Uh, I have written a blog article about Analyze in Excel. If you are interested, you can go and check it out. All of these links at the end is at the end of this slide deck. Um, if you use other visualization tools, uh, there are visualization tools that are limited in their modeling. Right, uh, like for example, Tableau is not a good modeling uh, tool. It is a okay visualization tool, but it's not a good modeling tool. You can use that for Power BI. You can have that as a visualization on top of Power BI. So if that tool has a limitation, Power BI can help with building the data model and the rest of that. Uh, what about paginated reports? If you have paginated reports in Power BI, mm, these are reports that are designed fine for printing, like this much space I have in my header. This is uh, the page size, A3 print, things like that. You can build those also in Power BI, and those can be also coming from the shared data set. So this is the three layers that helps you to replace any modules. Here you have the data flow, shared data set, and here it can be Power BI, Excel, paginated reports, anything else that you want. You are still using a full Power BI solution. It is just layered, and this layered or modular implementation is what helps you to build your, uh, your uh, multi-developer uh, architecture in a Power BI solution. Uh, there are lots of benefits, of course. This is just a few of those. Um, one of them is that data flow is not, a, let's say, developer tool like SSIS or Azure Data Factory. It's much easier to use, good for data analysts. Um, or even shared data set, you build it in Power BI. It's not a developer environment. It's really easy to use uh, scenario. You are decoupling these layers uh, from each other, you'll have multiple developers and you have faster refresh time, of course. You can reuse a lot of calculations, modeling and tables that you have without duplicating your code. These are just a few of those uh, good uh, reasons that why this uh, architecture is good. Now, uh, someone might come and say, OK, uh, Reza, I don't really have um, data flow because what I'm using is Power BI, uh, let's say a report server. I don't have a data flow. In that case, you can replace it with something else. You can have SSIS, SQL Server Integration Services, running Power Query source. And that would be doing the same thing. In that case, you can even write it in any other sources, in other destination you want, like a SQL Server database. So that can be your data transformation layer. The important part of this implementation is to have these layers implemented if you are if you cannot for some reason use data flow there are alternative for that however data flow makes things much easier as you have seen already 
Okay, um, these are um, uh, links to uh, some blog articles. I've written uh, blog articles for every single one of these examples I've explained to you, and uh, they are all free available in our website, in Redicat website. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, as I mentioned, which has a lot of um, videos about these as well. And I've written a Power BI architecture book uh, which has uh, coverage of a lot of other architecture aspects of Power BI. OK, now let's see if there is any questions in the question section. Is this webinar being recorded? Yes, it is recorded and hopefully will be available sometime. Um, do you know MS has planned allow us to write SQL queries from data flows? You can, I guess, write SQL queries. I don't think that is not available. That should be already available. Let me just check it for a second. I can go and say uh, create data flow. Add new entity. I can use SQL Server. Uh, now I don't have a, uh, let's say, uh, gateway setup or Azure SQL database, but you can choose that. The next step, you would be able to enter your SQL statement as part of the very first step uh, and use it in there. Even if it's not there, you can do it once in Power BI Desktop, because in Power BI Desktop, you can say get data from SQL Server. Let's say this is my SQL Server database, uh, and then you write your SQL statement here. After doing that, you copy the script and go to the um, data flow and paste it there. So it is definitely possible already. Uh, another question, is there a way to automatically create a data set based on a data flow as an offline backup? Um, by offline, I guess you mean something like uh, um, something that is not in the cloud? If yes, not using Dataflow because Dataflow is cloud-based only. Uh, but if you mean like another backup from the Dataflow, yes, you can. You can have, let's say, after building this Dataflow, I'll go back to the list of my Dataflows. After building one of my Dataflows, uh, I can go and have another Dataflow, getting data from the result of this, storing it uh, again as another data flow. So that would be like your backup, like a linked uh, entity from the existing entity and storing it somewhere else in case you would like to have it as a backup. Uh, Adam question, can you access CSV files from data lake? If so, how can you do that? Now, if you want to really access those CSV files, I mean, your, your way to access it at the moment is from Power BI. Right, so from Power BI, you say get data from Power BI data flows, and you see the result of that in that way. But if you really want to see those CSV files, like the actual file, uh, you need to use that. Um, you need to use that external approach of data flow because that way you'll see your own Azure Data Lake storage. You would be able to see files and anything else. If it is all internal, if you just use your Power BI license, probably. Uh, won't be that easy to access it. Another question, do you have any recommendation for version control for Power BI reports? Could it be Power BI files or reports in the service? Um, I would say at the moment, keeping them in a OneDrive uh, folder, OneDrive for business um, folder, for example, because that automatically keeps the versions so that later on, if you want to roll back, you can roll back to the previous version. That would be the easiest way at the moment. Gerardo question, is there a limitation when consuming data flows? I have six entities published in an organization workspace, but when open in Power BI Desktop, I can only see four. Mm, I don't think so here. Let me just check. Maybe there is a, there is a problem that you see only four, but here I have like tons of uh, data flows, right? Uh, I have tons of data flows in each data flow. I have definitely more than uh, one or two tables. You see here, I have a bunch of data flows in each of these. I have a table now. I don't have any of these, including six tables, but I guess if we had that wouldn't be a problem. I don't think this is a limitation. Maybe something is wrong in the implementation. Go and check it out, please. 
Uh, next question, are you able to read the DAX behind the measure when connecting shared data set? Unfortunately not, because when you use live connection, you can't really see that information unless you use tools like DAX Studio or Power BI Helper. These are free community tools you can use to get the information of the measures, and these are outside of Power BI, of course. 100% uh, data in data flow. Yep, definitely great idea, Martin. Uh, if you keep them all over there, that would uh, reduce the amount of time that you need to duplicate things in Power BI Desktop. Another question, will incremental refresh for data flow be available in Power BI Pro users in the future? Uh, that is what I'm not sure. Mm, but recently, because incremental refresh became available for uh, for uh, pro users for normal data set, I guess this probably is going to be available for uh, for data flow. But this is just my opinion. I have no idea about what is the licensing plan. Uh, Another question, Adam, would you recommend performing if then logic type transformation in Power Query data flow instead of DAX? If that type of logic is a row by row logic, I would definitely recommend to do it in data flow or Power Query rather than DAX because DAX is DAX should be reserved only for uh, <clears throat> for dynamic calculation. And if, for example, I have uh, a gender field and based on the gender, I want to guess the title. If it is, for example, female, I want to say miss. If it is male, I want to say uh, mister. That would be definitely like a row by row. That would be something I would definitely recommend doing it in Power Query or Dataflow. Another question from Martin, one shared data set per reporting visualization PBIX. Um, then then it won't be a shared data set because if you have one data set per PBIX, then it is just a single data set, right? It is not used in multiple visualization. Usually you use one shared data set in multiple visualization. Uh, another question, is there any way to share only part of a data set? Any hide query option maybe? Uh, you only see part of data set. Um, now, Power BI dataset behind the scene are analysis services, right? Analysis services dataset. Um, if you build it in analysis services, we have something called um, um, perspective, and perspective is similar to what you are talking about. I can have a really huge dataset, but then I have perspectives that says only these tables are part of this view, only these tables are part of that view. We don't have that yet in Power BI, but hopefully it will come at some time soon. Incremental refresh with data flows possible. It is possible, yes. Incremental refresh, you can uh, set up the incremental refresh in a data flow. I'll just go to this one that I built it. Uh, which one was that? This one, right? And here you can see that we have an option. Where is it? Incremental refresh. However, I'm not sure this one particularly is it available for Pro or not because the incremental refresh on the data set is available in Pro. I guess this would be soon as well. Uh, last question. Uh, ideal setup. So ideal setup should be raw data source to data flow, then to data set, then to Power BI report. Yes, that is the ideal. Um, solution for multi-developer architecture in Power BI. Okay, that's pretty much everything. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, until the next webinar, uh, goodbye.